I do. No, I actually have one. Oh I have goodness. one on Facebook. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Alright, as we can see, MST, the Chonburi's taking up the Radiant side, and Geek Fam down on the Dire, bans out the Ricky, another one of Chonburi's favorite pick. But it's a bit uh, out in the wind to say that, because a lot of teams pick Ricky nowadays. It could be just, just a meta thing. Yeah. Um, also, for pick order, it looks like last pick is going to be MS Chonburi. Is that pick? Last pick? Mm. I'm looking at the screen correctly, aren't I? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's going to be Yeah, Chandler's. so Chandler yep. should get last pick. Um, first pick, though, is going to be Geek Fam. And, I've, and I know a lot of teams, they like to pick up Snapfire as their first pick. That hero has just absolutely dominated the support scene. If, if she's available, someone picks her up. And I know Geek Fam yeah. does play Snapfire, so that could be a possibility. Unless it gets banned out, so Geek Fam, no Snapfire. Goodbye. It's a, again, Snapfire are one of those hot bands. If you, you don't want to deal with it. I think the uh, the Modimus Kisses is just a bit too annoying to play around with. So they'd, they'd rather just take it out. They took out Puck though on the side of Chonburi, which is, again, one of those heroes which I have seen shine, at least in a group A of the ESLC Championship, which we had like about a couple of weeks ago, right? The Nyx as well, super meta right now super disruptive especially when you talk about a team fight meta he's one of those guys you wouldn't want getting caught in the in the, in the crossfire because of his spike carapace yeah so rubik gonna be the first pick for geek fam very versatile as a support hero you can really do a lot of things for your team it's not all just about the steals but whoever is whoever is controlling that rubik assessing the situation and can handle it accordingly with that support ms chonbury though this is a very early opening they've picked up timbersaw as their first pick i remember when i believe it was winter is telling me how amazing timbersaw is in the current meta but also pairing it up with a disruptor as their second pick i I find that very peculiar uh and possibly just a deny pick from geek fan because disruptor is a good way to deal with the timber soul with the glimpse as well as the silence Radiant well but they did give away the uh, static storm potential on the way of the rubik so static storm into the mars arena is going to be pretty detrimental as so as well so i don't know what's yeah, going through chonburi's head yeah, that's assuming Rubik will be able to get close to the Disruptor. I feel like something that's really nice about Rubik is that you force some of these very important heroes of Chonburi to consider their position in that team fight, so that if they see the Rubik somewhere, they're going to have to try and skirt on the outside track to not let any spells get stolen, or even change the order that they cast spells so that instead of getting the silence, maybe Rubik gets the nuke instead because Disruptor tries to um, cast a spell immediately after the storm. Uh, but that's really, again, that's up to Geek Fam and also Chonbury with their positioning. Uh, next two bands, Bloodseeker and PL, we're going to get an Ember Spirit on the field. Really, really mobile. So far, the only real lockdown they have is Rubik on Geek Fam. Chonbury is showing a lot on their hands right now, showing that they want to go for the early tempo. Picking up an Ember, picking up in Timber, they, they know those are tempo heroes, maybe to the early mid game. Try to make space for this Weaver, who, yeah, like you mentioned, Geek Fam is lacking the lockdown, so that that should be something to worry about. They did pick up the Undying though, so Timber saw tanky as he may be, might just be t countered, especially Five with uh with an remain. Undying who can just suck the strength out of him, just render him immediately with like very minimal HP. So. Yeah, this is a very interesting Weaver pick because what Weaver sort of adds to the team is that he gives everyone minus armor with the bugs. And he's also pretty good counter to Undying because his bugs will also be able to hit the Tombstone. I'm not sure if this is sort of their way to deal with the Undying Tombstone. But again, it also adds this another hero that's got crazy mobility on Chonburi, and Geek Fam still doesn't have the necessary lockdown to keep one hero down and to kill them. Undying simply there to steal strength, weaken heroes, and hopefully let the rest of Geek Fam chip them down. But you have to deal with Ember Spirit, Weaver, and Timbersaw. You're not going to be able to hit all three with a decay. Oh, there you go. Another another hero that counters the Timber. So. Is Geek Fam actually expecting Chonbury to just have this Timber playing a crucial role in making the space for the Weaver at this point? Well, it is also a control with the Astral Imprisonment for the Weaver, but doesn't the Astral actually 
It, it gives him enough time to actually just it time lapse backwards, though. The same thing could be said for Ember Spirit because it lets him charge up another, you know, another remnant. So the OD, very interesting pick. It's a strong mid laner. Like that's without a doubt, OD is one of the strongest mid laners right now. He can destroy the mid lane. Uh, again, this also depends on how Ember Spirit matches up up against the OD. If he struggles, this is really good for OD because you want to get ahead. You don't want to be farming if you're OD. You want to get to that 15 minute mark. You want your items and you want to fight while Chonbury is still weak because Ember. Ember can fight, but he would ideally like to spend a little bit of time in the jungle, get those items. Same thing with Weaver, leave the heavy lifting to Timbersaw until the rest of the cores are ready. Yeah, when you brought that up, heavy oh, lifting team. to Timber. This OD just absolutely destroys the Timber, though. His arcane orb just hits him, takes away the mana, then you have the same problem on why everyone buys a defusal on a PL. You get this tanky guy with no way of running around because he can't timber chain, he can't use his uh, whirling death or anything. He's just he's just there to take some hits, which eventually this OD is just gonna demolish. Well, maybe that's Timber's job. He might not be there to kill anybody, but if he can keep Geek Fam busy while Chunbury farms up their cores, it should be good. Um, I think Geek Fam, they're realizing what's going on here and they say, let's pick up an early team fight lineup. Gyrocopter, amazing early game team fight carry. He just needs to get those early levels and he can just start blowing heroes up. Again, the only thing I'm worried about is this lockdown. How are you going to be able to keep someone in place to kill them with, you know, with a cooldown? They don't really have that, do they? Five well, I'm not worried away. about the Weaver, honestly, with the Gyrocopter pickup. Low cooldown spells, Flat the, Cannon, the Missile Barrage. I, for Ember. That's true, but in the, in, the, in the late game scenario, I feel Gyro just dish way more damage than they ever could. So even if Weaver time lapse out of this, he's just running in again to the same combination of Flat Cannons and the, the, the Rocket Barrage. So it, it's, it's just... It's just it's just quite quite difficult to go against when he has like an AOE AOE sort of damage output ability. Yeah, I really want to see how they build up this gyrocopter if he's going to be aiming for that late game situation or if he maybe builds a little bit earlier and maybe they try to finish the game early. I'm a bit worried because they don't have the best push. So even if they yes, win these exactly. teamfights, they're, yeah. they're not going to demolish towers. It's not like they're running a troll warlord. Um, they don't have mm -hmm. that lichen either. Uh, so this could be maybe a boon to Chonbury, seeing that we might not win these team fights. I think as long as we can delay it for as long as possible, get that Ember and the Weaver fat, I don't. I actually don't think Geek Fan will be able to kill them. And if they do kill one, it might only be one of those cores. MS Chonbury, what would he pick in the last minute? Here they have in to their reserve time. They gotta make this one good. So far, squishy, squishy timbers out of the picture. Support. I actually think this weaver is a support. A support weaver? It has happened before. Um, it has been I, I experimented and, on any, at least. Any heroes can uh, theoretically fill in any role, right? But like, wow, that's that's actually pretty risky. I mean, it's a best of three. They can risk it if they want to. Yeah, yeah, but the, they could either. possibly go for the minus armor. Jesus. They've gone for oh, Arkwarden! Oh, there you no. go! Oh, no. It's happening. Is it a support um, weaver? It looks like it. Yeah, I think so. Unless it's maybe a support, I doubt it's support Arkwarden. It would be a little bit crazy, but <laughs> they actually picked the Arkwarden. This is literally the counter, I believe, to Geek Fam's lineup because Geek Fam needs to fight together. They don't want to be going in by themselves. The only hero yeah. I could see that might be able to kill Ark Warden is the OD by himself. But other than that, Ark Warden is just going to have an absolutely free map. It's a split push, man. That's that's a that's yeah. gonna be a problem. That I the Geek Fam probably didn't see that one coming, especially with the first four pick. It just seems like they want to come in for the fight, or at least a pick-off with the Weaver. But now that Ark Warden's in a picture, they have another hole to cover. I'm gonna... Yeah, they to they confess, don't look like the best at it, yeah. I have to confess, I've never seen an Ark Warden lineup lose. Oh, well, I've seen one. It was a 65-minute game and they still lost at the end of the day. Look, Ponlo is on the Weaver, so it is a... Yeah, it's Support Weaver. Support. I had a feeling... It felt like it was way too early to to show us 
a support, sorry, a support. It was too early to show a carry weaver. I had the feeling that it might be support. It's likely going to be the minus armor weaver that we normally see. Pick up an early medallion and then you combo up the, um, the bugs with the minus armor and you can just shred heroes. I think Nico's the mid, right? If I'm not mistaken, uh... Nico plays the mid. Normally, our quadrant is mid, although every now and again we have seen him in that safe lane. They might just want to take a look and see what the matchups are. I do think our quadrant will do better just because he's a ranged hero and doesn't have to expose himself. For example, like the Ember Spirit who has to get into melee range. It could go either eye, though. I'm really excited, though. They pulled out the our quadrant so early. No, I'm excited for the support weaver. I want to see that one happen, <laughs> especially in a mean... tournament like this. <laughs> Hold on, if it works, does that mean you're going to start playing Support Weaver? No, no, hell no. I don't have the mechanical skills they do for that, but I'd like Looks to see like them mid. try. So. It is a mid, yeah, mid, uh, mid Arc that. Warden with Nico playing his comfort position there. Oh, this is going to be an exciting match. And it's, first, it's the first game of the day as well. It's not even the third game. It's the first game we've just started. It's six o'clock, it's too early. I don't have enough. Yeah, time. we're looking at a potentially nine games here at the at the maximum. So we're probably gonna be up till one AM in the morning if that were to happen. Oh, yeah. yep. Raven's already up top. Has two in the area though, with Ponlo dropping down a deep ward, scouting things out just to see just to make sure he doesn't get the pull off, I guess. He can come in ever so slightly to disrupt it. Meanwhile, down at the bottom, Cuckoo is taking the lane. I mean, taking the whole jungle. It's not the guy you want to contest, at least in minute zero. It's just tanky yeah, in general. Has the bulwark really already up. Yeah, mm -hmm. Disruptor can't really do anything to a Mars. Unfortunately for Disruptor, he's very weak at level one. You want to get your Disruptor to at least level three when he has access to several skills. Super easy to cash out if he's not careful. Um, and also he doesn't really have any way to protect himself unless he goes for level one kinetic field, which is really unideal. Oh, but with the Spark Rift though, that one hits pretty hard. They will actually contest the bottom rune and take it. They're probably so top, worried about trying to go for it. So far, it's a 2 on one it's a, it's a 2 for 2 for sure. Raven just harassing Ponlo out, trying to punish him for going for it. Nevertheless, 2 for 2 is the bounty runes. All good this way. So, the mid matchup, Nico versus the OD. Who do you... Don't, do you not see the OD coming up on this one? Especially with his RK North? Well, the biggest thing is it depends on the mid's positioning because it... Let's be real, okay? In Southeast Asia, we have very bloodthirsty. I've seen mids get incredibly greedy even though they are the stronger mid laner and then they just fall behind because they missed out on both blood. Um, so it really depends on how Carl deals with this mid lane if he either plays really safely oh. or he's very calculated and he gets those kills that he's looking for. Um, so far, yeah, he's... like hold that thought. Ah. Look at that oh, immediately. Sorry, out of the lane because of the undying and his DK stacks. He just isn't the tanky guy we were hoping to be in to create the space yeah. in the lane or at least just disrupt the laning stage. It's going to be a hard lane for him up top. Hopefully, down at bottom, Mel can still uh, come up with the farm. Slide of fist, just harassing him down. Cuckoo is down pretty low, but Zephyr in the area with the lift. I don't think they can actually go for any sort of potential kills right now oh look at Not top yet. lane though real deep diving in deep uh, inwards white mod actually caught up one trying to pull the wave Dyer's trying to get the second oh my he chicken. snipes out the courier <laughs> oh poor chicken he was oh. just trying to do his job Ponlo runs oh into white mod security yeah he gets it the mind yeah. games the dude will be free oh hold on there's another courier coming down mid he might catch it so oh, he's just, just gonna that's his entire it. role He's just the, just mo the mobile. Oh, is he gonna support. see it? Mid? Can we go oh, mid? Oh, he's gonna please? get it. He's gonna get oh, it in mid. No. Oh, no. He no, knows he we'll won't. come back. He's... He knows it will come. Oh, there's pigs, though. They see him. So, a pseudo bounty hunter courier sniping weaver? I guess. <laughs> but White One is still in the area, though. He might look to commit on him. Pondler's gotta be careful. The Astral is there just to. Oh, oh catch him out. Is. Here comes the courier Dying chicken. Sorry. Another kill. That's two minutes down again on the item progression, and that's that's big for a mid laner because they need their sustain to keep themselves in the lane. So two minutes down, if they were to make a rotation now, they might not get a kill, but then he has to walk all the way back. Yep. Just to get those regen. Yeah. 
The other advantage is that they also opened up that top lane for Timbersaw because without I'm dying there, you're not really going to be receiving any pressure. And look at Timbersaw CS. He's top of the CS charts because there was no undying to pressure him. <laughs> really playing some 100 IQ plays so far. And White so far, on. mid matchup. Looking great for Ark Warden as well. He's tied with the ODs. No one's really stepping up in that matchup yet. Oh, Sari. Okay. Nico having the time of his life. All thanks to Ponlo just do making all these plays across the map. He knows he was going to be uncontested. He knew that he needed... They needed two to commit up in the top lane. So he's just going out around. Or oh, there's two career snipes though. If he actually could get two up in the top lane. Astral in the mid. To yeah, not gonna get it. Unfortunately, that would have been epic though. That would have been memeable if he got two couriers. You know what he has done though? Up top, both couriers are, have actually been stopped. They're not back at base. So if anyone wants to use them, they will get delayed. You let yourself get carried away. It's the little things that matter. It is Dota 2, a game of seconds. Every single thing counts. And you can see Whitemon immediately has to walk to his career, just leaving more space for this uh, Timbosaw to wreak havoc on that top lane. Pops the mango. Looking at that bottom lane, looks like it's alright for Mel. He's CSing. 17 CS compared to 14 on Mars, so they're not losing that matchup. Oh, mid lane. They don't think they're going to be able to kill Carl there, but it's very close. It's Too close for comfort, yeah. Arkwood is getting strong. Oh, bottom lane though, they take the kill onto Mel, so at least something good going on the side of Geek Fam. I actually got the kill onto Mel, so uh, not all is lost. Despite the pressure up in the top lane, they do get the hard carry on the side of Chonbury, but Ponlo uh, immediately tries to move forward and commit onto Raven, but. It's a, it's a pulse for Weaver, so damage is probably not going to be a, an issue on his part just yet. Immediately moves forward, Sari comes in with the Timber Chain, but he turns around, Raven with the Holman Missile, but the damage is not enough, not without the Undying. Looks like it's rune time, we're going to be seeing Rubik pick up the first one. Uh, Ponlo, we got, yeah, so we've got a couple of runes to pick up. Has been killed. Oh, another career. More careers going down. <laughs> this guy. Cuckoo. My goodness. Ponlo's just Does showing up, man. This guy. Yeah. There's an invis rune in the river if anyone wants to consider picking that up. That'd be such a good ganking rune. I think so far the only team that has vision is... Yeah, so Tron oh, they rune, they actually... do have vision of the invis. Might look to commit onto this OD though. He's got a bunch of Spark Rift down and they know he's out of mana. K getting blocked by his own creeps. All they need is right clicks. Nico could not seal the deal. But that was close. The OD struggling. Uh, he's CSing better now. 29 compared to 21. But look at this. The Struck is going to come off. Immediately Kinetic Phil and the Thunderclap already on him. The rotations are coming in. But would it be enough? Zephyr Ooh, in the area will zone so them out. Close. Real close, trying to look to turn this one around. He's got a salve on him, drops the spark rave, cannot pursue any further. That was very close. I needed Nico to get the right clicks in, but Carl, very fast fingers, manages to preserve his own life. Disruptor comes back, but now he's right next to Carl. He's probably gonna die here. What is this play? They knew that Nico had no mana to play around with. The kinetic field is out, but it should close the deal, close the gap, and they do, but they might just take K in return. Oh, with the influx and, uh, well, that's enough damage, especially with the clone already out. The biggest bait, if I ever saw one. <laughs> Disruptor taunting the OD, and with that, just overextends, gets a free kill to Nico, which I feel like is huge. You know, your, your support kill, but you're trading your life as a mid for a support. Not the best trade. Hashtag worth. Seri is now on his own in the lane. He knows he can take it. Ponlo, on the other hand, is he is he actually taking out the outpost real soon? Just forcing the rotation by White Mon out. But the homing missile already connects. They've got the decay stack. White Mon's in the area. They might look to commit, but he is on the tower. Missile barrage. Will it be enough now? He's a tanky guy. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's tough. He's got lots of health regen behind him. So it'll be very difficult for those two to kill the Timber. Maybe if they had the Rubik there as well with the lift, then they would have enough time to finish him off. But Ponlo looking to just put some harassment onto Raven. White Mon just trying to get some DK stacks up, soul rips, heals up Raven for a bit, but look at mid lane again, K in a lot of trouble. Trying to He's getting bullied there, out by the Yeah, the spark getting... rate, it really adds up. Oh, Arc he's got to be careful, he's pretty much out of position right now. Drops on the spark yeah. rate, has the Tempest double. Such an insane hero, and it catches a lot of people off guard. If you're not expecting the Arc Warden as that last pick, it could really throw off your mid lane. Uh, looks like Mel. Ooh, next oh, to look, two here is low HP. Is under attack. Yep, you could potentially get them both if they were to. Okay, they don't stick around, which is a good thing because that all he needed was a remnant in, probably slide of fist and searing chains, and with that, with that armor, yeah, it's gonna take them down. Yep. Considering how we're looking at these lanes, lots of heroes on the side of Geek Fam are escaping these situations, but they're at low health, and this is where TNT is going to be very useful when we transition into this mid game. Glimpse on the Disruptor will kill anyone that gets pulled back. So, Geek Fam, they're going to have to understand that reality and figure out how do we deal with this Disruptor. We need to win these fights. That's the only way you play against the Disruptor. You have to win those fights so that no one gets caught out by that glimpse while retreating. Because Disruptor but will always I... glimpse back the most valuable target. I don't think they can win any fights. It seems as though they're running from it. In fact, down in the bottom lane, even Kuku glimpse. gets gl glim glimpsed back into the kinetic field. You'd have to damage for it. Just right clicking, he commits the arena of blood. Just trying to go for the TP away. The Ravner comes in, searing chain, slide of fist. We'll make sure he does not get out alive. They do get the Tempest double though, so that is sort of gold going their way, but not the best case scenario. Raven has now got the homing missile locked on. Can actually get him on time. Ponlo is in the area, it stuns him in place. Drops down the tomb. The zombie's doing a lot of work, but he still has the mana to get out. He just needs one more. He's closing in the gap. Raven does get the kill with the rocket barrage. Ponlo did kill off the tombstone though, so we got some nice tombstone gold. It really feels like Ponlo is just there to counter the undying, to get rid of the zombies, get rid of the tombstones, just cause a lot of backline craziness. Uh, it wasn't enough to save the Timbersaw, but we're starting to see how this Weaver is playing out, and as the game gets longer and longer, when Ponlo gets those levels, he will be a nuisance. As you say that, he just died, so maybe... Uh, a slight, yeah. a slight change in plans for a little bit delays him for at least Limps. the next ten seconds. Glimp saves himself with the astral. They could actually defend this one. White Mon is in, recognizing that Nico is just gonna back away, just do Arc Warden things, and probably hit the farm. Yep. So it's just farming time here for Geek Fam. They need to hit their timings and get these items first, which is the reason why we're not really seeing them move around on the map. No one's really ready to try and go for these small pickups on a messy Trombury. So this might be the opening for Trombury to make the move themselves. We have seen them be a little aggressive with their movements to try and pick up some of these smaller kills, but they still need to farm up on the Ember. Mel's not 100% ready. We have seen him punished. Um, any hero that could probably really do anything is Timbersaw, but he even he has been struggling in that top lane. And Arc Warden, you really want to go late game with that hero. You don't want to be moving around too early with that Arc Warden because you just lose out on farming time. And Seri missing well, his top super lane. chain there. Yeah, the, the rotation's coming in. It's all three from the side of Geek Fam. If they know this, they drop the scan. It does clip. They know he's still in the area. Spots out. The tree's been cut down. They know deforestation can only come from one guy, and it's Sari. Going through the forest. Do they actually go for the chase? They're so close. Oh. Do they see him? Do they have the astral? No, they don't. Oh, they did such a good job, too. He jinked them through the tree lines and wasted their time. That was a rotation from OD as well. That was just free farming time bad. in the middle lane. Yeah. Yeah, that was that a lot of time bad. gone. Yeah, a lot of space for the Arc Water now as well. There's a regen now being picked up by Wildmon, so at least something on their side. 
level six on the disruptor as well. He's got access to static storm. It's on cooldown now, but this is when disruptor starts to get scary. He's got two points into glimpse, which is a reasonable distance. Level three, level four is when things start to get really dicey for Geek Fam. If you see oh, the Zapper being committed on it's all three heroes down at bottom, but Ponlo seems to be enough to actually make damage. And Seri just in to ensure the kill. All three heroes now at the top lane. Nico just playing this Arc Warden superbly fast, actually. Drops down the bubble. Will try and chip off the tower as he could. They will force the glyph. I mean, the glyph, yeah. Yeah, I love this emphasis on push so far from MS Chombury because every tower that they get benefits their entire team and especially the Ember Spirit because he'll be able to come online much sooner than he normally would without all of this tower gold. And obviously, oh, hold that once thought, you're ready, Arena of Blood has been committed. Nico gets caught inside and the call down. It's magical damage just pierced us through those bubble and now Sari, the next target Disruptor's in line, coming. he's trying to timber, timber chain his way away. The homing missile does connect. Disruptors down at bottom. I mean, down at the top that lane, but hiding so far. Did back. they actually get it? Oh, here comes the, uh, the static storm, but unfortunately, not enough for that one. Zephyr now has the chain. He's just going in, but probably will not commit. Mel M, though, does get the kill onto White Mon down bottom, but the hammer drops down and takes him off. That fight Messy just swings the way of Geek Fam. Yeah, very, very messy there for Tronbury. They're trying to make some cheeky plays. Nico sticking around for way too long. If the disruptor came about two to three seconds earlier, Timbrasol may have just survived and they would have probably walked out with two or three kills even. But because they finished him off before TNT could get into position, they just lost. They lost way too much. They didn't need to lose those heroes. In particular, Arc Warden just got greedy and stuck around in the enemy jungle without any vision. Looking at the ward vision, the only vision we see for the Radiant is on the uh, Dire River down towards the bottom, but that's about it. Whereas the rest of the wards, they all belong to Geek Fam and they know where these heroes are moving. So they are trying to flash farm with the ancient stack. So so far, Raven is their late game potential. I think they're banking on that. They gave him a better lane than it was down at bottom. But Zephyr, hold. I'm gonna hold my thought because he's been committed on here. They did catch him for a bit, but the astral imprisonment will save him for a bit. The call down comes down. It is all three finally revealed. Do they actually want to commit? Raven goes straight for TNT. Black Cannon is out. But unfortunately, they do not have the control. As you said, was going to be an issue. Immediately, Zephyr Timber, sa Timber chains away. Oh, but Ponlo comes in at the back. They forgot about this guy. He is such a nuisance. Without, with He's the lack of control. Vision. Yeah, they are just going to pick them off one after another. Astral Imprisonment to save himself. Raven, he has to turn in the save. Will he not? Black Cannons from the distance. They do drop the Arena of Blood to disengage. So it's a defensive arena. But they have already lost their OD at that point. Ponlo still trying to go for it. And that's sort of the situation that we were talking about earlier. You need to convincingly win these team fights because the moment you start retreating, if that disruptor is not dead, he will catch you with the glimpse. And if it's not disruptor, it's Ponlo. Ponlo did a fantastic job there. When he saw Geek Fam retreating, he decided, I'm going to go to Sakuchi. I won't attack. I'll give my team vision so that we know where Geek Fam is trying to juke us and we'll catch them out on the other side. Brilliant plays coming in by Tronbury. They're utilizing every aspect of their team. Geek Fam's honestly doing their best as well. It just seems like positioning wise, they couldn't quite get the angles that they were looking for. It, it, it's what we said it earlier, they just don't have the catch to finish off those heroes. And it's really showing it's super detrimental on their side of Geek Fam now that their hope to get the farm onto Raven it has gotten slimmer by the second as they clear up their jungle. Earlier on, they have to try and get some space back on their side. Geek Fam, what would they do? They are they know they have to get this Raven fat before they could do anything. But if the pressure keeps coming in like this, with Nico just pushing towers after towers, I don't know how much time you have. Yeah, they're they're down to the Tier two towers, which are looking still pretty healthy, but with the arc, with the arc warden on the map, unless you have though. someone. Yeah, 60 minutes. If the thing is, if the towers are down, that's a huge chunk of gold going in the way of Chonbury. Whereas you look at Geek Fam, they have pushed nothing. They are down three, they're behind three towers worth of gold. Oh, look, they're, they're not giving any breathing room for Geek Fam already smoked up TNT. Drops they the, uh, the sentry, does, yeah, does scouts it out, so they know 
Someone's in the area at the very least. But they, they do not see the observer. Yeah, they yeah. don't catch that one. That could be a problem. They found a mango tree! No! Aww. Well, there's that's no more sustain in the jungle. You probably ditched the top one now. Go down to the bottom. They are hurled up. Do they look to try and make some desperate plays here just to get some sort of lead? Ponlo in the area gets Astral up. But with the lack of stuns, I don't think they can go for it immediately. Drop down the Static Storm. So all they can do is right click onto Ponlo. They did force the big ultimate from the Disruptor though. But Cuckoo, if they actually get the kill onto him, it's got to be well worth it. Oh, the Spear does catch him on the tree with the Fate Bolt. We'll finish the job. So Cuckoo, he, he was pretty lucky at that point. Faded right into a sentry ward as well. And while that's happening, you got Nico pushing top lane again, all by himself. Dyer's top tower is under attack. He's just playing his own this game. A, yeah, this is a really tough game for Geek Fan because they need to set themselves up to win. Um, the blank dagger picked up on the Mars will be very key because if he can catch out three heroes in his arena of blood, that should be enough for them to sort of take the victory in that team fight because a lot of heroes on the side of Chonbury they are pretty squishy so if they can catch out for example Nico where he's vulnerable even oh. Polo if they can catch him out too OD as you said getting oh, catched gosh. out it's K from Geek Fam again going down in the mid lane Axe just been ganked on Axe he's got the axe so, so some, oh, some sort of a plus TNT. point here they see the disruptor they want to get, go for it TNT though even TNT is just baiting them all out they caught up the Ponlo. Ponlo gets the time lapse off, so he does not die just yet. Has the BKB. Raven has to pop it uh, with the flat cannon, trying to go ham, but is being baited by the Timber Saw on the back lines. Meanwhile, they just wipe off all the supports. And now Ponlo yep, in and the area. Just... The glimpse catches onto Raven. Raven back into the heat. We'll go down. Hello. Mega kill streak now onto the side of Mel M. Oh, this Disruptor Weaver combo is deadly. Geek fam, they got debated so hard by the Weaver, they thought, okay, we should be able to blow this bug up. No, just time lapses everything off, all their spells for absolutely nothing. And they were down two heroes. They were fighting three versus five. You have to be very desperate and feel that you're in a situation where you just cannot win if you're actually fighting three heroes versus five. MS Chombury, they're doing such a good job at controlling the map, getting these pickoffs, and even coordinating the team fight so that they know where to cast their spells, who are they targeting, can they blow this other hero up? It's it's really, really nice to see how Chombury's playing. It's just absolutely perfect. They're meeting every criteria that they need to make their lineup work. Whereas for Geek Fam, they're getting slowly disassembled. It's not over, they just need a good team fight and to start picking up yeah. that goal for their course because they can go for it again. Goal. Yep, they're going for it again. It was a fight down at the bottom near the rune area. Cuckoo came in with the initiation, but unfortunately, he does not get the chance to actually kill Melem off before he remnants away. In fact, he sees Zephyr. Zephyr gets glimpsed back now into the Static Star with the Kinetic Field. Will hold him in place. And all they have to do is just three man up on one, and that was pretty brutal to watch. Yep. If you're running, the war is already lost. It's really not a good feeling here. They're just getting picked off left, right, and center. If if you're geek fam, you have to sort of sit back and reevaluate the situation because they they thought that they'd be able to win these fights through pure aggression, but after seeing how things have been going up so far, they might have to turn it back a little bit, play more defensive, be more calculating because so far they've just been going for kills if they think they can get it. And well, as you well, said, defensive. They're going straight for the Roche Pit. They feel that they know and they want to take this. Drops down the uh, Tombstone, but unfortunately, they already took the Aegis. They got to back out just now. Cuckoo, you, there's no point of you coming in to contest because it's all over. They took the Aegis yeah. of Immortal and now you just got to get out of here. K, okay, once again, oh, oh, coming to vision that's necessary. Do they get the glimpse though? That's the bigger problem here. Spark right down. Does hard. not at least prop. So he wouldn't, oh, be, he wouldn't be slow down. Oh, Cuckoo gets killed down in the mid lane in the jungle. But they they, they finally do get the glimpse, but unfortunately not far enough. K will get out, but they lost Cuckoo and they lost White Mon in the process. Yep, this is not the kind of team fight experience you want to be if you're a geek fam. They're just losing everything left, right, and center. And something I forgot to mention as well was that they picked up a BKB on a gyrocopter. And if you pick up BKB, it normally means you want a team fight. You want the gyro to survive. 
during those fights to at least finish heroes off. He, I believe his first BKB was a defensive BKB, and he even might have to use it here if he wants to TP out. He's trying to get away, he doesn't want to use it, he's gonna go for the cooldown, but maybe he's just gonna have to succumb to death. TP. He's going for it, did have the burst, they yep. do not! The Actually, they got the control. Yep, they got the glimpse to cancel it. Now, I, I yeah. wouldn't mind if they lost Whitemon and Cuckoo, but if Raven was up and farming, it might have been like some slight of glimpse of hope. But no, that glimpse yeah. of hope just glimpsed him backward, cancelled the TP, and now he's gone again for another 35 seconds. Oh, I think Carl has just been spotted out too. He's got DD, but does it really matter if they see you coming? Chasing Pond though. Does it matter if they want the team fight and not running away yeah. from it? Yep. Nico. This is such this a scary match. I've never seen an Arc Warden being so impactful at like 20 minutes into the game, but he's making it work. Arena of Blood has been committed, but doesn't connect onto anyone. They want Disrupted though. He's the bigger guy. He's already dropped the Static Storm, but they can't even get a kill on him. And now they're turning this on to K. K has the defensive Astral Imprisonment himself up. But Mel is in the area. He pops the BKB. He comes in well with the Flame God and just tick him off with the Slider Chain, Slider Fist. So... Yep. Not even Cuckoo a threat, couldn't he even was finish. just taking tower. Yeah. Yeah, Cuckoo was so close to finishing off the Disruptor. If he killed him before the Static Storm um, Kinetic Field came out, OD would have lived. But just on the edge, Disruptor managed to just clip Carl. And he gets away because Cuckoo had to try and reinforce for the OD. And they're going to get more Soul Rips trying to keep Cuckoo alive. But here comes the Flame Remnant. Oh, comes in with the Spark Rave. The damage is enough. Drops down the call down, connects onto everyone. Black Cannon is good, but unfortunately damage isn't. And now he's just trying to man up against a Tempest double. Oh, to get the real Nico. White Mark falling pretty low, actually. Throws in the uh, Chakram. Gets no one from that Nico. engagement. So there's... Oh, Nico as I say that, Zephyr is the one who's going to die. Zephyr has gone. There's a mega kill onto Seri. Yeah, Nico doesn't care. He's still got the Aegis. <laughs> he's fine. He's really got nothing to worry about. Geek Fam, they're pinned in their base. No towers left. Likely a high ground attempt in a minute here for Tronbury, but Geek Fam, they've already got one chance left. They defend within their base, hope that they can get at least a clean fight, or if they can, make sure they, their cores are surviving at the end of those team fights. Hopefully get a gold swing and maybe turn things around, but just look at the net worth difference. 9k on the OD compared to 12k on Nico. And he's going for a Skadi as well, so this Arc Warden, he's just gonna get even tankier, plus you get the Skadi effect, which they're already struggling to run away. Add Skadi on top of that, you're not going home, you're going back to the fountain. Well, aside glimpse of hope on the side of Geek Fam, they do have pretty formidable high ground defenses with the tomb, with Mars and his uh, and his rebuke. You've got Gyro with his flat cannon, but they cannot go over commit like this. Getting caught out again out of the static storm with kinetic field. Do they have the damage? He finally commits the arena. Soul Rip is there to hold him for a little longer. Terry, he's going straight in with the burst damage coming up from the Whirling Death and the Timber Chain. It's enough. They want Raven next. They know if they take him down, it's pretty much GG. He has to pop the BKB. Soul Rip the hole. Just keep him alive for a little longer. He is still it's there behind the near one. He's got to be careful though. They can't have means to jump in. But Cuckoo went straight in and gets stunned. No, he's down. No buyback. 70 seconds. There's no buyback oh. to this. Looks like this tower, this lane is over. The barracks is gone. Yeah, there's no way to defend down. this. Yeah, Raven by himself and the support, they, they can't defend this. They're just being rolled. I think that's the simplest way of putting it. They got completely outplayed in all their lanes. And even during the mid game for some of these team fights, it looked like it was going to be good, but Geek Fam, they just couldn't quite finish off their targets. If anything, probably just a really big drafting issue here. They the idea was there. The idea was to dominate that top lane with the Gyro Undying, get the Gyro a very quick start, quick BKB, and that they fight Chonburi before they come online. But because of what Ponmo did to slow down the mid and that top lane with a couple of career snipes and even pulling Whitemon away, huge factors, in, and it basically slowed down Geek Fam's plan. And now that they're on the same level, or they're even below Chonburi now, they just can't do they don't they don't have the necessary tools. They've got BKB on Raven, oh, but where's looks the like damage? The final? Yeah. Yeah, they just don't have the damage to kill anybody. 
They've got to be careful though. They have means now to at least counter the Static Storm with the Force Star being picked up, but that looked like it could have gone bad real fast. Defending the high ground. They do hold. They only lost the mid lane of Rax, which is pretty crucial as it is. That's a lot of oh, the access part, into the jungle all gone. Double damage rune in the river as well. And I think Disruptor will spot this out maybe. If they take that, that's basically a game ending rune right there. They just go in with Nico, double damage rune, that's it. Game's finished. There's just no way they protect the towers. That is smoke from Geek Fan. Oh yeah, that's a smoke. Raven tried to smoke. Oh, I got smoked. But unfortunately, you smoked into Panlo. Yeah. Gets the vision, pulls Cuckoo back in place with the kinetic field. Holds him there. The astral imprisonment just uh, saving his life for a little bit more. He's already committed the tomb. He does get out just in time with the blink dagger. But look at that. The Skadi <laughs> picked up on Nico. He's still doing damage from inside the bubble. White more now to fall. The call down is there, but the damage isn't. Uh, he's coming in with the flag cannons, but how long? Can you actually hold before you actually take him down? Mel M just roots him up and walk away right in front of him. The Chakram though, look at that damage! Has to pop the BKB oh, Raven now. Goes all the way back into the fountain with a BKB. God knows how many seconds is left. The spear doesn't even connect. This isn't their luck. Kuku tries to timber chain away, but the slider face will take him down. The damage is enough. Sari, monster kill streak on this guy. Nico's Tempest double has been doing so much work. It is so fat. He was able to zone the whole of Geeky Fan while they were trying to kill Cuckoo. It's... When your illusion... Technically, it's a copy. When your copy is just as threatening as the main hero, you know you're in trouble. And Raven's trying yeah, to bomb and he just gets caught out. Yeah, his BKB oh, got used earlier too. That was a desperate play like right there. You might as well just hit the GG at this point. That's 50 seconds disconnected. Yep. It was a GG. A 30 what minute game. Match. Yeah, what, yeah. what a 